right, chapter 10, do stegosauruses like salsa? Do you guys like salsa? That evening, my tail wouldn't stop hurting. So mom took me to the vet. The vet. When I asked her why we weren't going to see my regular pediatrician, Dr. Backer, my mom turned me, turned, <laughs> excuse me, Dr. Backer, my mom turned to me in exasperation. And just how many broken tails do you think Dr. Backer has ever seen, she demanded. I guess she had a point. But still, the vet? Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. Dr. Gilmore, whom I had seen last when we brought Fanny in to be spayed, saw me right away. She bumped me to the front of the line ahead of a golden retriever who had, been, who had bitten through his stitches and a Pekingese with an ear infection. After a quick x-ray, she diagnosed me with a sprained tail and sent me home with an anti-inflammatory and orders to ice the injured area. My dignity was still smarting the next day, but my tail felt much better. And after school, Sylvie invited Elliot and me to visit her mother's new restaurant. My mom seemed unusually enthusiastic about my going, probably because the restaurant was on the edge of downtown, quite a long walk away, and Dr. Gilmore had told me that exercise would help my tail heal properly. The restaurant's front door was papered shut. There was a large banner draped over the front of the building, which read, Coming soon, Mama Juarez's Cucina, Mama's Kitchen. Over the door was a drawing of a smiling woman with Sylvie's hair and a milk chocolatey brown skin, offering a plate of tortillas to the passerby. Sylvie led us in through a door in the back. Inside, several dozen tables were shoved together in the center of a large dining room, and four men on ladders were painting the walls bright orange. Hola, mi hija, came a loud voice with a heavy accent. I was enveloped in a big, squishy hug, along with Elliot and Sylvie, before I could see where the voice was coming from. When I could breathe again, I noticed that the hugger bore a striking resemblance to the woman whose picture was above the door, except that her smile was even brighter in person. Sit, sit, she commanded, steering all three of us to one of the tables. I'm so glad you brought me some taste testers. Some what? Elliot asked, as four waiters appeared, each carrying a tray so heavily laden with food that the plastic was groaning with the weight. They spread the plates out on the table in front of us and then disappeared back into the kitchen. Elliot sat obediently and grabbed a fork. Mom, Sylvie complained, scowling down at the table. There was easily enough food there for ten people. Shush, Mrs. Juarez kissed the top of her head. You know it's been a long time since I've done straight Mexican food. We're finalizing the menu today and I need opinions. Start with the tamales. Yes, ma'am, said Elliot, who was already halfway through the plate in front of him. Oh, I said that the wrong way. Yes, ma'am, said Elliot. <laughs> Mrs. Juarez beamed at him. Elliot swallowed and seemingly remembered his manners. I'm Elliot, he said, sticking his hand out across the plate of enchiladas. Mrs. Juarez shook it. It's a pleasure to meet you, Elliot, she said, and then turned to me. And you must be Sawyer. I shook her hand as well. That is a lovely tale you have there, Sawyer, Mrs. Juarez complimented me. Don't you worry, I have a big salad coming for you. Do you like salsa? I considered this for a moment. I'm not sure, I said finally. I don't think I've tried any since the summer. She gave me a shoulder squeeze. I'll bring you out some just in case you want to spice up your greens a bit. All right, Mom, Sylvie said pointedly, nudging a plate of chili rellenos to one side to clear a spot for her notebook. We'll try all the food, okay? Okay, Sylvie, Mrs. Wise said in the exact same tone of voice. Then she narrowed her eyes suspiciously at her daughter. Empty your pockets. What do you mean? Sylvie asked. Her face was suddenly a mask of wide-eyed innocence. The expression looked that the expression looked really weird on her. You know what I mean. Mrs. Juarez tapped a foot impatiently and held out a hand, palm up. Pockets now. Sylvie's innocent face melted, replaced by an annoyed scowl. Sighing, she dug into the front pocket of her sweatshirt and deposited two handfuls of candy corn into her mom's hand. Sylvia, Mrs. Wadda scolded, shaking her head at the candy. You know what your father thinks about this. Dad's not here, Sylvie said quietly. Mrs. Wadda started to say something and then stopped. Instead, she reached out and patted her daughter's head through her orange hoodie. I'm sure you've had enough sugar for the day, she said finally. Time for some real food. Pop your head in the kitchen when you're ready to leave, okay? I'll give everybody a ride home. Okay, Sylvie said, scowling a at a bowl of chips. Mrs. Waters disappeared around the corner. I sat down and took a sip of water while I studied Sylvie. She was still staring at the chips. Sylvie's mom wasn't what I had pictured at all. From Sylvie's description, I had expected a mean woman who cared only about her restaurant. 
The real Mrs. Juarez hadn't seemed like that at all. What was Sylvie's problem? I looked at Elliot across the table. He was chewing, chewing, and looking worriedly at Sylvie. So your dad doesn't let you eat candy, I ventured. Sylvie looked up at me. For a moment, her eyes looked filled with hurt. I was just starting to get seriously concerned that she was about to cry when she blinked, and suddenly she was back to normal again. Dad has a thing about sugar, she said, reaching for a chip, and he's still on his business trip. Oh, and he's still on his business trip, I prodded. Yup, Sylvie said flatly, swallowing her chip. She opened her notebook and held the pen, poised over the empty first page. Focus, boys, we're here to work. Oh, yeah, sorry, Elliot said, pushing some enchilada aside to grab another plate. Let's try this one next. What is this? Then we can start on the... No, Sylvie snapped at him. We're not here to talk about food. We're here to talk about what is happening at our school. Oh, Elliot looked disappointed. Here is what we know, Sylvie said, leaning forward importantly. Eight kids have been kicked out of school. Ten, I interrupted. Justin Thomas and Gabrielle Clark had been sent to Principal Mathis's office that morning after they both yelled, feeding time, and threw sandwich meat at me. I could only assume that had been Alan's idea. Okay, ten, Sylvie amended, writing all of the names down in her notebook. Ten kids have been expelled, and no one has heard from them since. We have visual confirmation that at least one of them is no longer living. Now hold on, Elliot interrupted. In his house, Sylvie added, interrupting him to act no longer living in his house, under suspicious circumstances that would lead a reasonable person to believe that something out of the ordinary has happened to him. That sounds about right, I agreed, as Mrs. Juarez returned holding a large bowl of salad. I winced as my injured tail thumped with involuntary delight. Mrs. Juarez placed the salad in front of me, along with two other smaller dishes. This one is salsa, she said, pointing to the first one, which was full of chunky bits of tomato and onion. And this one, she said, pointing to the second one, a rich-looking brown sauce, is mole. Mole? Elian asked, his mouth full again. What is that? A Mexican sauce made from chilies, spices, nuts, chocolate, and a few other things, Mrs. Juarez answered. Chocolate, Elliot exclaimed. That's awesome. You can't taste it, Sylvia said sulkily. Mrs. Juarez frowned at her daughter. You can if you're paying attention, Sylvia. Let your friends make up their own minds. Mrs. Juarez squeezed my shoulder and she straightened up. I thought it might go nicely with your salad, Sawyer. You must get tired of plain greens all the time. And Elliot, the same sauce is on the mole poblano. That's the dish on your left. Cool, Elliot said, exchanging his scraped clean plate for the one Mrs. Juarez had pointed out. It was a giant stuffed pepper drizzled with the brown mystery sauce. Kind of sounds cool, huh? Have you had mole sauce before? Thanks, I said, and gave my small dish of mole an experimental sniff. It smelled warm, which sounds weird, but it really did. Warm like spices and nuts. I poured it over the top of my salad. Mrs. Juarez returned to the kitchen, and we returned to our conversation. I really don't think that Parker is dead, Elliot offered, as he disemboweled the poblano with a knife. If anything like that had happened to him or to any of the others, we would have heard about it. Remember Gwen Carmichael? I nodded as Sylvie frowned. Who is Gwen Carmichael? A sixth grader who died in a car accident last year, I explained, as I took a bite of mole so covered solid. It was spicy. Spicy enough that I felt my eyebrows shoot up in surprise as soon as it hit my tongue. Somewhere behind the spice, I thought I could also taste the chocolate, but maybe that was just my imagination. I swallowed before I continued. We basically didn't even have school for two weeks. We had special assemblies and meeting with counselors. We all made fake roses out of tissue paper for her. Stuff like that. It was all any of the teachers talked about for weeks. And Gwen wasn't even in our grade, Elliot pointed out. There's no way ten kids in our class have died and we haven't heard anything about it. Sylvie nodded and wrote Gwen Carmichael in block letters in her notebook. So the school made a big deal about it, she summed up. But they don't haven't done anything about the ten kids who got kicked out. Interesting. Which means they didn't die, Elliot surmised as he scraped a bit of dribbled sauce off his black Oregon State Beavers jersey. Or it means somebody is covering it up, Sylvie countered. Covering what up? I asked, coughing a little bit after my second bit of mole. This was definitely a sauce that fought back when you ate it, but I didn't mind. Mrs. Juarez was right. I had been getting a little bit tired of plain veggies all the time. Whatever happened to them, Sylvie answered. I'm not saying they all died, but Parker's mom said she missed him. And if he's still alive, he's definitely somewhere where he doesn't need any of his clothes. That's weird. Can we all agree that that's weird? It's weird, Elliot agreed, but what can we do about it? 
We can find out what's going on, Sylvie said. Her expression was so determined that I could tell Elliot and I were already on board with her plan, whatever it was, whether we liked it or not. What do you, uh, who do you think is covering it up, I asked, and why? Sylvie tapped her pen against her chin. I'm not sure about the why, she admitted, but I think that part will be obvious once we figure out the who. Then who is covering this up, I asked again. And do we even know what this is? This is a confusing conversation, Elliot muttered, chewing. The obvious who is Principal Mathis, Sylvie said. She's the one who's kicking all these kids out in the first place, right? She's the principal. It's kind of her job, I pointed out. I suddenly felt defensive of, on Principal Mathis's behalf. She was, after all, going to a lot of trouble to defend me against the kids who were making my life miserable. Yeah, but if anyone knows what's happening to them, it's got to be Principal Mathis, Ellie agreed. Even if she's not the one doing it, principals know these kinds of things, right? They have files and stuff. We need to find a way to sneak into her office, Sylvie decided. What? I exclaimed. Why can't we just ask her? Sylvie and Elliot exchanged that stupid looks. If she's hiding something, she's not going to come out and tell us what it is, Sylvie informed me. We're just kids, Elliot reminded me. I doubt she'd talk to us about other students, even if she's not hiding anything. I vote that we sneak into her office and see what we can find, Sylvie said. I vote that too, Elliot agreed, and shoveled a spoonful of rice into his mouth. I frowned. Somehow the two of them had managed to get on the same page, but they had left me a few pages behind. Still, I found, found myself nodding in agreement. Sometimes, especially when you're part dinosaur, it's easier to just go along with the crowd. I grabbed a napkin to dab my watering eyes. I had eaten my entire salad, and now it felt like the mole was trying to escape through my eyeballs, also through my nose, which had started running. All of a sudden, I felt a sneeze coming on. I could tell it was going to be massive, but even I wasn't prepared for how loud it was when it finally came. Ah, 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 Sylvie and Elliot both jumped. The guy at the top of the ladder nearest just jumped too and glared down at us. Wow, Elliot exclaimed. That was one big dinosaur sneeze. I shrugged and wiped my nose. I felt better. Like when a cold you've had for a long time finally goes away. Kind of cleared out. Maybe I should eat spicy food more often. All right, that's it for today.